Weight gain makes your titties amazing. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Leanna if you're new. This video is the story of my weight gain journey. If you're trying to gain weight as well, hopefully this video offers some help or some insight into uh, what my weight gain journey was like so that you know what you're getting into. I'm also going to be doing my makeup simultaneously to hone my multitasking skills so employers will want me so bad that they won't know what came over them. Let's get started. So everything I say in this video is just my personal experience and what I went through. I am in no way a certified health professional, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. This is just my story. That said, I was 108 pounds in high school. I was very, very skinny. And then I came to college and I started very deliberately gaining weight and I eventually got to 130 pounds. And when quarantine started, I was around 123 and now I am currently 116. That is because I haven't gotten to go to the gym, which is devastating. So I just haven't felt as motivated to eat as much or I just don't have as much of an appetite since I'm not lifting as much. I'm just doing like body weight workouts recently. So just a little background, I was really skinny when I was in high school. Genetics was part of the reason why but another big contributor to me being hella skinny in high school was that I would skip lunch to <laughs> go to club meetings and that was not healthy whatsoever. So basically what I would do is I would eat breakfast and usually it'd be a really, really small breakfast. And then I would go to school and lunch would be around like 11, 12, 11, 30. My school was trash, okay? They used to have 45 minute lunches and then they changed it to 30 minutes because they realized that, you know, kids only needed 30 minutes to eat and then in the last 15 minutes they would just fight. <laughs> like, they would eat and then fight. And therefore, I was cursed to only have 30 minute lunches, which honestly is just rude. Therefore, you know, I didn't want to miss out on the club meetings because the lunch lines would be really long. That is why I ended up being really, really skinny and malnourished and super weak and that is why when I joined Dragon Boat in freshman year of college I literally couldn't even do lunges without dying <laughs> so definitely not the best eating habits highly recommend that you do not skip any meals so I've always been pretty skinny but I didn't really think much of it whenever we did have PE or like you know health related curriculum they would tell us about the BMI which was the body mass index which is trash because BMI only takes in two factors your height and your weight and then they tell you on a scale if you're like overweight or underweight or whatever but 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 it doesn't matter because muscle is a lot heavier than fat and if you take Dwayne the Rock Johnson for example or Terry Crews they will both be overweight on the BMI scale and that is just blasphemy because they're not overweight they're just very strong and obviously very healthy so BMI is trash so BMI is only good if you don't exercise and you, if you don't like try to gain muscle at all but as kids like they stressed it to us like this is what healthy is if you're like on the average on the BMI scale god american education garbage that's what they stressed to us and you know occasionally it's just to make sure i was healthy i would make sure that i was um good on the bmi scale and i would always fall between the underweight and average sections of the scale so i was like okay you know what i'm fine like i'm not like super underweight to the point it's like a health risk i'm like almost average like i'm a little skinny but you know it's okay so i didn't really think much of it after 2014 i realized i was really skinny mainly because of social media and like the whole slim thick thing that was getting really popular and like skinny shaming lots of skinny shaming so i mean if this were 10 years ago i would definitely get shamed for talking about my struggles being um, a skinny person because you know people would be like oh boo hoo you're like you're skinny you have a fast metabolism you're such a stupid bitch like your problems are not even problems <laughs> that's because back then fitness was very very fitness and health was very very centered around weight loss and today it kind of still is but slightly less i think society has been a little more uh, accepting as of late and less like skinny shamey so that's good but speaking of skinny shaming um, that is why I wanted to start gaining weight because people would always make comments like oh Leanna you look anorexic or like Leanna are you eating enough are you starving yourself on purpose like you look like you're gonna be blown over by a gust of wind like 
like oh pancake butt whatever whatever like making fun of people's weight is just rude and it's damaging either way like fat skinny it doesn't matter like people still like make fun of you for it so yeah i was like fuck this <laughs> I want to be strong. I want to be thick. One important thing to note before like I talk about this a little more is that weight gain doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting fat. Weight gain can also mean gaining muscle and getting strong, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to gain muscle, not fat. If I wanted to just get fat, then I would have eaten cake every day and not worked out whatsoever. But I wanted that toned, slim, thick, like tight look. I wanted the weight gain to go to the right places, you know, I wanted to be the societal beauty standard because like, you know, that's that's what mattered to me and still kind of matters to be honest. So like health wasn't really like too big of a motivator because I already felt like I was healthy, like I didn't feel like I was unhealthy because my BMI was like on like between average and underweight, like it wasn't underweight, it was just kind of there. So I was like, okay, you know what, I, I don't need to like gain weight for my health, but I would like to gain weight for, you know, beauty standards and also to get, um, to stop getting relentlessly skinny shamed so obviously you want to work out to gain muscle and again muscle is really heavier than fat good example of that um this is fit girl mel melissa alcantara she posts a lot of before and after pictures of like you know before she got really buff and then like after she got really buff but here here are two side by side pictures of her at 145 pounds um her body looks significantly different but she's still 145 pounds in both in the right picture it seems that she's a lot smaller um a lot more fit it's because she lost the fat that she had in the left picture and gained muscle so you know 145 and 145 like it does it doesn't matter like the number doesn't matter it doesn't tell you anything what i mostly cared about was what i looked like in the mirror um i, I didn't care if i was like 130 whatever 140. when i was trying to gain weight i did a lot of research and essentially what it boiled down to was two factors fitness and food so let's start with food this is the more important category in my opinion um without fitness you'll still gain weight if you pay attention to these things caloric intake first of all everybody has a certain maintenance amount if you're eating at your maintenance that means you are inputting the exact amount of energy that you need to match the exact amount of energy that you expend per day so that your weight doesn't fluctuate at all. So obviously if you want to gain weight, you have to eat at a caloric surplus, which means that you have to add a couple hundred calories to that 2000. So maybe 2100, 2200, 2300. And if you want to lose weight, you go under, right? So in the food that we eat, there are macronutrients, carbs, fat, and protein. Carbs are essential. For energy okay protein is essential for muscle growth fat fat is good for something else but I just mainly care about carbs and protein because you know carbs have a lot of calories in it they also give you a lot of energy um, so I like to eat carbs before a workout and then protein afterwards that is what a lot of people do so Google says that it's best to intake protein after a workout of course consuming enough protein is a lot more important than timing Fat just kind of does something else, which I don't know about, but one thing that I learned is that not all fat is bad fat. Like, obviously, if you eat, like, a lot of junk food, then it's going to have a lot of bad fat in it, and then it's going to be very hard to for your body to break down. But there are a lot of good fats as well, like omega-3s in the salmon and avocados and just, like, a bunch of other healthy food. So fixing your diet is the first thing that you can do. Like, try to cut out those sugary drinks. Like, you can eat a lot of junk food to gain weight. That's called dirty bulking um, because it's not clean eating, it's dirty. Um, it, it will help you gain weight, but it will also be not great for your body. You know what I found, like ever since I started eating cleaner, every time I like ate junk food, like I would feel kind of nauseous. Clean eating is just, it makes a big difference on how you feel. Oh, here's the, here's the thing. With clean eating, it's a lot harder to reach that caloric goal. 2,000 calories is a fucking lot. Like, it's a lot. When Especially if you're just eating, like, healthy things like broccoli. Because vegetables don't have a lot of calories in it. Which is why, like, the, the stereotypical, like, diet food is, like, salad. Okay, don't eat salad. Salad's garbage. You need to eat, like, good, healthy food with a lot of calories in it. So I don't do this anymore, but I used to track all my food using this app called MyFitnessPal, which is really useful for estimating the amount of calories you should be eating per day based on if you want to gain or lose weight. 
weight. If you want to see me using my fitness pal, then check out my what I eat in a day video. I'll link it down below. Um, I know you're probably thinking, Jay, like that's a lot of work to like track everything that you consume. Trust me, it's a lot easier than you think. So implementing higher calorie foods really helped me a lot. Like I said, healthy foods are very, very not calorie dense like a burger would already be like some a thousand something calories right that's like half of the calories that you need in a day burger fries shake like that's probably like uh, 1500 calories that's why like junk food is so associated with obesity because you know that's like one meal and then you'll have like another meal just like that and then you'll like you're up to 3000 calories without much trying you know eating healthy doesn't mean that you have to eat salads it definitely doesn't mean that <laughs> instead of salad i would implement a lot of higher calorie foods and you can just do a quick Google search of like what foods have high calories and like my fitness pal also tells you how many calories are in whatever food trail mix like nuts have really really high calories um, I also used to make this like giant smoothie with like two bananas some protein some berries some spinach and I would just get like a bunch of fruits and vegetables right like first thing in the morning but eventually it just got to be too much to be drinking like every single day so um, I just eventually stopped but while I was drinking that giant ass smoothie, I also added peanut butter, I think, Jesus. And when I was doing that, I was gaining a lot of weight. Drinking calories is a lot easier than eating calories. And it, it was also good for getting my micronutrients, you know, that are in fruits and vegetables. And it made digestion a lot easier. I went poop a lot. You know, I also had protein shakes, especially after my workouts, because like I said, I wanted to have protein after the workout to kind of optimize muscle growth. Some people like to drink it before, some people like it to drink it during. I feel like it's just too chunky to drink during like, uh, like you're, you're, you're moving around and then you're like also like drinking chunky protein juice. But yeah, protein has a lot, a lot of calories. And if you're having trouble like reaching your daily caloric goal, then protein is a really good idea. Especially if you use like two scoops. I was using two scoops for a very long time and that was um, 43 grams of protein alone. When you're lifting, the recommended protein amount is 80% of your body weight in grams. So basically, if you weigh 100 pounds, you would have to intake 80 grams of protein every single day in order to optimize muscle growth. So yeah, protein can be a lot of calories. For me, it was like very hard to reach that protein goal without the protein shakes because meat does have a lot of protein in it, but based on like how much I was eating, <laughs> it was definitely not enough to reach that 80% of my body weight. So protein really helps. Protein is very, very essential for muscle growth. So now moving into the fitness category of the two pillars of weight gain. So when you gain weight, you gain fat and muscle. It's not possible to just gain muscle. So you gotta work out to make sure you get a good muscle to fat ratio. So what I tried to do was heavy weight lifting. I stayed away from cardio at all costs because I noticed that my metabolism was really fast and I didn't want to do anything to lose the precious weight that I had gained. Lifting definitely won't give you big man muscles. I know so many girls who said they don't want to start lifting because they don't want to get bulky. But girl, you know how hard it is to gain muscle? Like, I've been doing bicep curls for like two years and I don't even have anything. Like, it's really, really hard to gain muscle. Like, trust me. You only get bulky when you progressively lift heavier and heavier and heavier each week to grow that muscle. But if you're just like lifting the same weight, like each week, you're like doing like a lot of different exercises. Like you're, you're not going super, super hard. Like, like you're not, you're not getting bulky. So if you want to know what I do in the gym, I do have a couple of workout videos on my channel already. Um, I'll link those down below as well. And you know, right now as I'm making this video in quarantine, I'm, we're, we're still all restricted to home workouts. So I've been using resistance bands lately, so I'll link those down below if you're interested. So now there are a couple things that I wish I did differently or things that I wish I knew when I first started. Um, the first of which is bulking too early. Bulking too early and too much. So if you don't know what bulking is, it's basically what I did when I uh, first started lifting and it's basically eating a caloric surplus. It's, you know, bulking up, trying to bulk up kind of aggressively. Of course, there are ways to bulk more moderately by only increasing your daily calories by like 100 calories or so. What I did was around like 300 calories of a surplus, which was very, very dramatic and probably not necessary. And I did this for like a year because I was really trying to fight my metabolism because I felt like it was against me. I was like, ah, oh, you want me to be skinny? You want me to have a fat ass forever? So I was trying to like actively fight it by like eating a lot, a lot, a lot. So that's why I like bulked for like a whole ass year. And you know, it worked out for me pretty okay. Um, but since I ate at a surplus for a very long time, eventually my metabolism just kind of went like 
Okay, I'm gonna sit back now. And I didn't notice, which meant I was gaining a lot of fat, which led me to be around 128, 130. And again, the number on the scale doesn't really matter, but it was just how I looked that I wasn't happy with. I was gaining more fat faster than I was gaining muscle because I wasn't lifting like super heavy either because I felt really discouraged in the gym. So I wasn't burning the calories that I was intaking. The reason I say I did this too early is because when you start working out, you don't need to bulk or cut super aggressively because your body isn't used to you doing exercise. So you're still gonna see pretty decent results at first. Bulking is supposedly for people who have been working out for a while and their body is really used to their whole routine so they need to eat more to kind of shock their system for the lack of a better term to gain more muscle basically i definitely wish that i started bulking later or did a more moderate bulk to um start out so that i didn't have to get to a place where i didn't feel good about how i looked and then have to come back down i wish it was more of a gradual incline where like i felt happy about myself the whole time because i kind of overate and i definitely feel like i gained a lot of fat in my face which isn't going away like even though i'm 116 now which is pretty close to 108 i feel like i have a lot of like face fat and like stomach fat that just wasn't there when I was like 108. Now the second mistake that I made or thing that I wish I knew about was I didn't follow a strict hypertrophy plan. Hypertrophy is basically what I mentioned earlier about gaining muscle. It's having to increase the weight week after week after week so your body is constantly challenged and it doesn't get used to anything. You know, of course at first it doesn't matter if you lift super light weights because your body is used to you doing nothing. Lifting zero pounds, so when you lift five pounds, that is already an increase for your body. So that's why new gym goers usually see results pretty quickly and then kind of plateau later. But if you're lifting five pounds for like several months at a time, then your body's gonna get used to it and then you're not gonna see results anymore. So that's why you have to constantly increase the weight to make sure that your body doesn't get used to anything, to make sure that you're um, still challenging yourself. So I, I didn't stick to a hypertrophy plan, which I regret. And that was mainly because I didn't have anyone to push me, like I didn't have a trainer or anything. So when I would get discouraged, I would just kind of take it easy and not do super heavy weights because I was tired. And that really like set me back a lot. So, you know, eventually my body was just getting really used to what I was doing and it was really, really hard for me to increase and I feel like this set me back a lot and um, I wasn't getting muscle but I was still eating a lot so I just got a lot of fat. Now the third mistake that I did was not doing cardio. I think cardio, um, especially HIT, might have been really useful. HIT is high intensity interval training. So like going for a jog is like low intensity, but like over a long period of time. So it's like steady state cardio. I think it's called steady state cardio. And like that has its own benefits, like endurance or whatever. But HIT is basically like a really, really high intensity. So like you're doing a lot of jumping, like moving around, like push-ups like really, really fast within like 10 minutes. And that is your whole cardio workout. Like you're really like pushing your body like to the max like in that 10 minutes instead of just like going for a 30 minute jog. So HIT is really great for fat loss based on what I know. And I think HIT might have been really useful for managing the fat that I did end up gaining. But I've said this a million times before and I'll say it again. I hate cardio so much. It feels like I'm dying. I did try HIT a couple times. It was definitely a lot more fun than, you know, just running for 30 minutes, but I never really got into it. Uh, HIT is also a really good option if you don't want to sacrifice junk food, but you also don't want to gain a lot of fat. Not saying that you should just like still eat a lot of junk food, but like allow yourself to have those cheat days because it's really hard to stay really clean without any cheat days. You know, like clean eating might sound really hard, but it's actually like you get used to it. Like eventually you get, you learn to like the taste of brown rice. <laughs> okay, so even though I look like I'm suffering here, healthy food is actually really, really good. There are a lot of really healthy, good recipes that um, you don't have to sacrifice your health to enjoy. I think I just really hate brown rice. I mean, at this point, I'm okay with it, but man, I miss white rice, especially as an East Asian. Oh my God, I can't believe I sacrificed white rice. So now that I'm two years into my fitness slash weight gain journey, uh, there are a couple things that I have noticed. So in the past year, I kind of shifted my focus away from weight gain because, you know, I was 130 <laughs> last year. That was not my favorite place to be, so I just kind of focused on maintaining my weight and also like, you know, not eating as much. I mean, I didn't deliberately lose weight, it's just like when I stop like watching what I eat, I just lose weight. I know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lucky ass bitch, but <laughs> it's actually kind of upsetting because I feel like I've definitely lost a lot of muscle that I worked really hard to gain when I was still going to the gym. So yeah, there's not really much I can do. You know, now that I have had the experience of gaining weight and uh, being at a heavier weight than I had ever been at before, I've noticed a couple things. First of which, 
Weight gain makes your titties amazing. <laughs> like, I always thought since I had Asian genes, like, I was cursed to have small titties forever. And I mean, I still kind of do have small titties, but like, they look great, dude. <laughs> I honestly like don't mind like having smaller titties because that means I don't have to wear bras all the time Which is nice. I've noticed that a lot of my fat like goes to my upper body and you know my titties <laughs> I've said titties too many times already, but yeah my my titties get a lot bigger Okay, that's the last time I want to say it <laughs> Another great thing I noticed was that I don't get as cold easily anymore Um, I used to be really cold when I was like 108 like all the time like I'm still kind of skinny so I definitely still feel cold, but especially when I was like at my heaviest, like 128, 130, I definitely did not feel cold as easily. And another thing is that eating more really, really helped my quads grow. I think for me, it was because it was really easy for me to increase my quads. Like, I think I really am quad dominant. Like every time I do like glute bridges, it always I always feel in my quads. So I mean, I'm glad, but then I'm also sad for my butt because my butt's not getting any of it. My legs are hogging all of it. But you know, I, I really do like my quads. Oh my god, this eyeliner is so dry. But yeah, like eating more definitely helped my quads grow really big. They're my favorite feature of my body. Like I love my quads. And you know, one really great thing about having big quads is that it really gives you that hourglass shape, which I really like because I don't have a lot of hips. By having like big, juicy, curvaceous quads, it, your body kind of go, like, goes like this. It's great. It's great. I love it. Okay, so I just put on liner and lashes and we're not done yet. I can't believe I almost forgot about lips. So in summary, what I did was eat a lot but not unhealthy and also lift it heavy and that's just that's the magical formula i'm still working on it lately i haven't really been focused on um eating as much lately i've mainly just been trying to make my workouts a little more intense like there's not really much we can do in quarantine so you know i'm just making the best of the situation you know at first fitness for me was about gaining weight and getting a big fat juicy butt but um, now it's more about, you know, me being healthy and, you know, also me looking good, but it's not my main focus anymore. Uh, it's mainly about me being healthy and me getting my endorphins and, you know, having a nice body doesn't, doesn't hurt. <laughs> for me, weight gain for the most part has been a really positive experience. I do feel better in my body. I uh, feel a lot healthier. You know, my titties look great. <laughs> Can't complain. That said, that is the end of this video. Uh, I do have like a slight, I don't know what the fuck that is might be a bug bite or like a pimple let's just ignore that shall we that said this brings us to the end of this video i finished the look i tried to do something a little different this time uh, than what i usually do the eyeliner's uneven for sure but you know what it's okay so definitely if you have any questions please leave them down in the comment section below and if you don't want to comment publicly then you can dm me on instagram and i'd be happy to help in any way i can with that said that is it for today's video thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one Okay, bye!